This is the 17th season of Bass Talk Live with your hosts, Mark Jeffries and Matt Pingrak. BTL is brought to you by Lorenz, Bass Cat Boats, Apco, Duck and Fishing, Strike King Lures, Sunline, Big Bite Bakes, Spro, Exo Lures, Yamagatsu, The Bass Tank, and Denali Rides. PTL, coming at you. Good Monday evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of BTL Bass Talk Live, where myself and Rick Pierce are going to talk bass fishing and anything else that we want to talk about. Rick, the PM edition of BTL, thank you so much for taking time out. This is going to be good. Appreciate it, Mark. All right. We have a lot to discuss tonight. We've got some fantastic guests lined up, but a big announcement has been made, and this really, really kind of showcases some stuff that you're going to have going on on the West Coast. What can you tell the fans about? Well, we we lined up uh, Thursday, and we announced that we were going to hold a Western uh, bass shootout out West, and that's what we're trying to do, and we've selected. We want to, we got a big program to try and grow the West, and we're going to kick it off with that, and we are trying to engage the West Coast at a different level, and not just ourselves, but we also want everybody. We want you to engage the West. We want, you know, Skeeter, Yamaha, Phoenix, you name it. We want everybody to engage the West. And that's what it's about. We're trying to grow this entire freshwater fishing market on the West, man. All right. Uh, I'm super excited about this. Anybody that has watched BTL over the years, I am uh, very pro West Coast. I always discuss and kind of showcase uh, what should be taking place out on the West Coast? Uh, I, I grew up in California, and I am really, really excited to see this develop. And the plan right now is to make this happen in the year 2023. Correct, Rick? Yeah, we're going to start in um, late winter, early spring of 2023 and try to catch that February, April time zone, I mean, month zone in there and catch that season and have a what we're doing is a true West Coast championship. All right, can you explain to the fans real quick how this is going to take place, what it's going to involve? It's not just a fishing tournament. There's so much else that's going to be involved in this event. Well, we're going to have entertainment on site. We're going to do an outdoor show. It's going to be, it's a, really, we took what Wally's done, which what Wally did, Wally Marshall at Crappie Expo, and uh, he took the FLW cup template and basically made it into Crappie Expo. And we're running with that same size template. We're going to do an indoor weigh-in on the end of a, a convention center and try to use part of the weigh-in for the um, um, part of the area for the weigh-in and then the rest of it for outdoor show, everything from UTVs, ATVs. Um, and it was just it's just been a mission to do and try to give the guys out west something. Because you you basically, you know, it's like Ty out. Ty wins the uh, Anger of the Year and blows them away at Toyota last year, wins two events. And he's got to go all the way to Kentucky to fish a championship, you know, and there's really not a true West Coast champion because a lot of those guys out there aren't really engaged at those levels. And, you know, Toyota's struggling. We want to help it grow. Um, we want to, and I'm, kudos to MLF for hanging in there with us. They know what we're doing. Uh, kudos to Bassmaster. They're supporting us. So uh, we just want to see this thing go on. Now, the tournament's going to feature 50 anglers, and and in my notes here, correct me if I'm wrong, it's going to be the top 10 from one bass, the the top 10 from the MLF Toyota Series, Mm -hmm. and Wild West Bass Trail Mm Pro-Am, Angler of the Year races, and the top 20 from the Wild West Bass Apex Cup Pro Series. Do I have that correct? Yeah, that's right. 50 guys. Yeah, five zero. So we're going to try to, um, and we did that. A lot of people said, how'd you come up with this? We did this. These are the events out West that have basically the highest entry fees. They're the true top end cream of the crop out West. And so we're just going to put all those together in one box and shake them up and see who falls out. 
Do you have the venue selected yet? Uh, we do have the venue, and we do have a permit that gives us the right to the venue at any time we want with the California market. And uh, it's going to be in the California market. We've announced that. Um, we said it'll be in that area basically around what is the central location. The majority, and uh, you know this, we've talked about it, Mark, but you know the majority of fishing revolves around the Delta. So we're not saying it's going to be the Delta. I can assure you, you'll be shocked where it is at. You know, don't forget that Bassmaster will drive 90 miles to go somewhere to fish a classic. So, you know, we do have a venue. Uh, we do have a location. We do have a convention center. Uh, Jeremy's meeting next week, I believe, with the convention center, and we're going to tee that up. And we'll have an announcement on a, the actual home location. And we're going to try to do that in one major city for two years. It'll revolve around that area of the Delta where anglers just, that's where they're at, you know? Yeah. No, that's cool. Uh, do you have any idea what first place is going to pay yet? No, we're not there yet. It's going to be a pay to play. That's one okay. of the very unfortunate things of that because we don't have any revenue at this time. This is a one-off event, taking all these circuits in. Uh, we're going to take the 2022 standings. So we've got all those events yet to happen next year. Of course, they start here pretty quick with the uh, Havasu for one bass. So mm -hmm. the Arizona Open starts pretty quick. And they're actually going to have four events next year in the one series. So those have created, and, and uh, you know, Billy's done a good job of trying to format that where he's got a true AOY championship we asked him to get to. And uh, we asked him to please give something like an AOY so they can all get to one spot and have an Anger of the Year format. And that's this is obviously where we were headed the whole time. And Billy's done that. So we've got a good AOY set up with one bass. They kick off the year, and that kind of answers it, you know. This is fantastic, and I know it's much needed in the West, and uh, it's it's always a challenge, though, is it not, Rick? Can you go and, and kind of explain to the fans the challenges that exist in doing this on the West Coast? Well, you know, the number one thing everybody says is water, and there's a lot of truth to that. Um, and when you look at event structures, water's one of them because they've got low water on the West Coast, you know, Shasta, um, obviously Oroville is just about a puddle right now. It's, you know, there's a lot of water there, but it's hard to get to. Um, and it's, it's down tremendously from where it was at Oroville and they've got all these challenges across the West. So those are certainly challenges out West with angling, but they've got a lot of other things like Comanche we went to with an apex cup. And one of the keys of what we're trying to do with apex is we're actually, this is part of this growth thing on the West coast. We want to pick small platforms that are, you know, to the, east of salt lake city and and go into um southwest colorado and we want to pick small platforms we can have small events with and that's one of the keys about apex with 60 guys and so we're trying to grow angling in areas where it, they really don't fish as much as they could mm -hmm. and that's one of the goals so that's a, sort of the template but the challenges out west as you said the it's just there's not a huge anger base you know um, and we've shown that in that video, as you've seen, and we've shown that hot map. And the West Coast equates to about 7% of the USA market. And that's a line running right through the Dakotas all the way to San Antonio, Texas West. It's about 7% of the fishing market. It's about 10% of bass membership. And it's about 7% of a major retailer's um, hard tackle bait sales before the recession. So we know the numbers. It's a really unique situation. And in order to do that, our mission is to try to get people something to come to that's like a championship event. And hopefully, you know, if we gain two people, we gain, you know, but we want to gain more than two people. And our, our mission is to grow the West and use this event to kind of kickstart it and then take other things into play. Yeah. The number 50, that that's a really, really good number. I think that's a good number to start with. And uh, very impressed with the fact that, that 50 guys are going to compete for whatever the dollar amount is, but this is truly the uh, championship of the West Coast, is it not? It'll be the first true championship of the West Coast. There's been yeah. others that want to say they've had a championship, but they're really just championships inside their organizations. And um, this one's going to take in all of the premier anglers. I mean, you look at down south, you got Grover's Bunch down there and, you know, Rick and Kent Brown's crew down there around the, the SoCal Delta area, you know. And that SoCal market, then you've got a group that comes in off of um, where Ty's from down there around Arizona. 
and uh, you look at what happens. They, there's little little concentrations of anglers in the West, and none of them are in like one area. And so somebody in Las Vegas knows somebody in Los Angeles and knows somebody in Las Cruces, you know, and it's... <laughs> And they're all a long way apart. <laughs> right, right. All right, I have to ask the question. Uh, do you guys know what the format's going to be? Is it going to be a five-fish format? Well, or is that still up in the air? We're going to a format of some type, but we're going to try to mix it up. And those things haven't really been final decided yet. Okay. But we know we've got to have a fan base and uh, some type of a fan spectator engagement. And to do that, you're certainly going to have to bring some fish to the scales. All right, let's do this. Let's start to bring our guest in. The first guest I want to add is Jeremy DeHart. Let's bring him in. Jeremy, how you doing, man? And he's frozen. <laughs> Back, he's, just there. he's just a little slow. He's kind of squeaky today. Well, that's that's quite a good still shot right there. All right. He's, he's going to have to log back in. He's, he's in a bad cell area, but just touch real quickly. And we'll see if he can get reconnected here. Yeah. Uh, the importance of, of Jeremy to this whole thing, Rick. We asked Jeremy about, um, yeah, Greg's texting me. He's all ready to go there. He said, uh, okay, good. all right. All right, but uh, Jeremy, uh, we asked Jeremy. We started this conversation about three years ago, Mark, and uh, wanted to get um, engaged on a championship out west. And then about two years ago, we came to terms with Jeremy on his organization and what we wanted to do. And it was just a natural fit. We were already in conversations. Of course, you know, Randy McBride, Randy's a friend of mine. Randy's a tournament director for Wild West on the Pro-Am side out there. And, you know, Jeremy's jumped in and said, yeah, we'll do it. And uh, he got a little ahead of me a little bit and started running the race a little early. But he got off pretty hard with his weight apex thing. And Apex is a challenge we asked him to have, take on so that we could create a true West Coast tour event. Because there's nothing for those guys out there to really do at a high level. And, yeah. so, and, and you know, the, you know the challenges out West. Um, and we know that to get a number of entry fees, it's got to be more than um, uh, it's got to be more than what they're doing with Toyota and less people because they just can't have like a top 150 tour and get those entry fees. So Jeremy took that to heart and made this little pro-am, I mean, this pro-type concept with Apex. And we're going into these small communities. So they did um, the breakout event up in uh, Oregon on the Washington, there on the river. Then they did um, they did Comanche, they did Al Amador, they did uh, Thermalito After Bay. They've had some really good events, and that's kind of kicking off Apex. But then we bring Apex into this other format, and that's that Western Bass Shootout. And what we're trying to do is grow that that shootout into making it that true West Coast championship. And those guys are still going to have event structures to go fish. But Yeah, I think we have them now. Jeremy, oh, you there? Oh, yes, I am. Apologize for that. Right. Uh, went through the, the boonies there for a minute. Yeah, I see the, no. I see the desert going by in the background. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's all good. All right, man. Uh, give me your thoughts on this whole situation and really – uh, what this tournament series is going to offer the anglers on the West Coast, Jeremy? Uh, well, are you speaking of Apex or just the overall? Um, the overall. The, overall, the formation the overall. of the championship. Well, that you know, it's been very unique with Rick's help and how it's been kicked off um, in order to make this happen. I think it's something that the West Coast has really desired for many, many years. And uh, we saw an opportunity to to take it to that next level, um, introducing Apex and then funneling it into some unique um, opportunities that uh, Rick has developed with partnerships. And, and it, it's something that we really look forward to. I think it's going to change the dynamic of the way the West Coast is, uh, is shown. I think there's a lot of uh, talent. I think there's a lot of opportunity for the endemic and non-endemic to really see and and understand the the angler base the representation that is possible out here in the west and uh we look forward to that providing the platform that those things can lock hold and and really change the whole uh structure of the west coast all right that's uh that's fantastic and uh the apex series it, it's been really really good has it not yeah it's uh you know this is our first year out we were very selective on information and 
And uh, we really just wanted to make sure that we had things dialed in, developing a show, had a lot of uh, support from from uh, organizations and companies like uh, Bass Cat, Mercury, and so on. And and that helped us get a good foothold in what we're doing. Then we implement a few unique structures with Tourney X and, and kind of mesh in some of those those type of systems where we can also include, you know, a, a specific way on how we, we format the event, the rules, the, the off limits periods, the, the lake locations, you know, keeping it very unique, um, kind of out of the way, trying to develop that marketing uh, strategy in, in those unique communities, giving them an opportunity that they maybe have never been showcased as before, and then branching it from there. And I feel with the feedback, um, that we have received just from it seems like just from the general public as well as the anglers our customer base it's been phenomenal um so we want to continue to deliver that message we want to continue to partner with uh, strong leadership in the industry and i think that uh it seems like our customers are telling us what they want and uh, i get calls all the time about apex how do we qualify how do we get there what can we do um, how do we help um, and it's it's very unique and, and fun to watch the growth that is taking place. All right, very cool. Now, if people out there want to find more information about the Apex Series, where do they go? What do they do? Uh, well, right now we're for, we're airing our shows on the Pursuit Channel. Um, we are airing over thirty nine um, shows during the uh, first uh, the fourth quarter here. Um, we also are on the Outdoor Action TV network. We're also on our own YouTube channel information you can go to apexprotour.com um, you can also go to uh, the wild west facebook page all of our instagram we keep those updated with information in regards to the upcoming events but then also apex angler highlights um, very unique um, structures and and ideas and we're we're going to be providing the the new list of anglers that are coming on for this year as as we get their pages and the biographies developed and uh been been very exciting all right very cool rick anything for jeremy so well, jeremy he's done a really wonderful job trying to get this thing kicked off and anytime we turn a corner he turns it and so everything's just clicking right along mark we're on track uh, like i said he's out he's going to meet with the convention center i think next week right jeremy yes sir and so we're going to be on track and uh, soon after that we'll announce where the home site will be basically soon after that and then we'll probably have um, more press releases coming as we develop this whole western bass shootout all right great stuff jeremy we're gonna let you get back to the uh desert driving or whatever you have going on there i'm not really sure all <laughs> well, right we'll, we'll let you go wonderful phoenix okay Thank all you. right all right man see ya all right there you have it now it is time rick to bring in some of the anglers that are gonna participate in this hopefully uh, and, and get their take on everything that's going down. So let me add our guests to the live stream right now. We've got John Stewart. Uh, we've How's got going, Tony. Good. We've got Tony. Uh, we're going to bring in Ken, Ken Ma. We've got a name that uh, a lot of people across the nation might be familiar with, Greg Gutierrez. Greg, good seeing you, man. Hey, good seeing you too, Mark. It's been a while. Uh Yep. A fantastic young angler, Luke Johns. Hey, everybody. And, and uh, Greg, I have a question real quick. Is there any way that you can go horizontal on your phone? Um, yeah, let's try it. How about? Let's see here. How about that? There we go. Look at that. We're good to go. Well, at least that we've got you back now. All right. I'm going to start with, with John, and then I'm going to go through every single body. I, really... I want your initial reaction to the formation of what's going to go down with this championship on the West Coast. John, what are your initial thoughts? Uh, you know, I think as a West Coast angler, we're, f we're finally getting what a lot of the East Coast and Central anglers are getting, that just that opportunity to really showcase our skills with the best anglers of the West. And I know that's kind of how Apex was created. There was about 30 of us this year. But when you start adding one bass and uh, the Toyota series, because obviously some of those anglers aren't fishing Wild West and or, or Apex, now you're really getting the opportunity to showcase what the West Coast has to offer. Um, 
a lot of the handful of elite guys that are from the West, you know, they have moved out East just to be able to not have to travel so far and, and, and compete at the highest elite levels. Um, and, you know, now we get to keep a few of those anglers out West with us and, and fish our own little championship and just show, show America what we have out here. Very cool. Greg, what are your takes on it? Oh, I can't, I can't wait. Um, it, it's really cool in the fact that we're going to, we're going to have multiple organizations because, you know, there are guys that support certain organizations and not the other. Um, and this gives a great opportunity to put all those top sticks on the water at the same time. And the guy that walks away with that trophy um, is, is really going to feel like he's something. I mean, we got some great sticks, but we don't always get them all together all at once. So uh, I think it's awesome. The idea, I think it's a great plan. All right, Ken, what are your thoughts? Uh, long time coming, Mark. You know, I, I, I've always been uh, a little frustrated that, uh, you know, some of the greatest anglers, you know, from our region uh, had to go back east, kind of similar to what John has said, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, I want to be a part of the team that helps build um, a format that, um, you know, that gives people, you know, like recently, you know, we're, we're losing a guy like Brian Smith. Uh, I think who you guys have talked about here and there, who's fishing mm -hmm. the MPFL, you know, um, you know, he's probably one of the currently one of the best anglers that we've developed here lately. You know, and there's other guys who can't leave, uh, you know, due to job or family and things like that. But um, and then Ty is another one. Uh, but, you know, we can go back 17 years ago when they did the last BSS Open here, you know, when that first crop left. Um, you know, so just to just to be on the front end of building something, uh, you know, with what, you know, Rick has been championing, championing a lot of this with Jeremy. But just to be on the front end of that and be able to say, you know, look back, you know, uh, especially like with a guy like Greg, who's been fished everything, done everything to say, hey, I helped build that. You know, it's like the original group that built the Elite Series. No one, no one other than that original 104 guys, I think is what they, uh, seven, 18 years ago when they invited those people, uh, those anglers. No one else can say, we, we helped build that, you know. So, uh, yeah, there, you know, and I, what I would tell the public and is, you know, there's a lot of unknowns right now uh, because we're trying to figure it out. Um, you know, just bear with us, um, you know, and all that information will come when it's time for it to come. You know, I mean, some of it is, you know, it's like behind, it's like behind backstage, it's a mess. But then when you roll the curtain up, it looks perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, that th those are the kind of things that are going on right now. So, uh, yeah. you know, be, be patient with us and, and uh, as it grows, uh, you know, what I'm hoping, and I've said this, you know, a guy like Bryant or a guy like Ty says, you know what, I, I can stay uh, where my family's at and, uh, you know, compete for high stakes. And it's not just about the entry fees and the payout. It's really about the format that is afforded for someone to sustain a living in the fishing industry, right? It's not, you know, again, you, you know, you can't sustain a living off winning not possible and if it is there's less than 10 percent of the people that are doing it right right you know, so that that's what i'm excited about all is, right is leaving leaving something very nice tony what are your thoughts yeah i agree with a lot of what ken said um you know, I, I started fishing tournaments in 89. Uh, I started fishing prams in 92. And to be honest, uh, I don't, I, I haven't seen much growth in the numbers of people that are participating between then and now. Um, there's more, there are more organizations. And so, you know, you get less numbers with some, with a lot of these organizations, it just kind of spreads things out. So the market is only so big to bear um, to bear these anglers right now. And I think that's, what's exciting about this is for the first time, we're bringing the entire market together in terms of com competition. And this is just the first step in growing the market. And it, it, it's, it's kind of like that, you know, rising tide floats all boats. If that market grows, every one of these organizations is going to benefit. Every company is going to benefit. Um, and, and, you know, as Ken said, I mean, I'm excited. Look, 
I, I'm, I'm older than probably the, the average angler out there. Um, I'm on the, the high side of the average age uh, of a competition angler. And don't get me wrong, I will be fishing tournaments as long as I can stand in the front of the boat and as long as my shoulder doesn't fall off while I'm casting. But um, I, I, like Ken, I'm excited about building this. I'm, yes, I'm going to try to take advantage of, much of it, uh, as much of it as I can. But um, this is really something that's going to grow for the younger generation. And I'm excited to be part of that and build it and really, uh, really see this thing take off. And again, Ken's, Ken also said, you know, be patient. Yeah, you need to be patient. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It's going to take years for us to grow this thing to what we really want it to be. And even then we'll keep improving, I'm sure. Um, so we have to keep that in mind. But it's an exciting prospect. All right, Luke, uh, you're the youngster of this group that I have on the show tonight. Uh, what are your thoughts? You know, I like everybody else said, I'm super excited for this to take place. And as the young angler, as or as a young angler, I think it's really exciting that I'm going to have something pretty much to look forward to for, you know, the rest of my time fishing that we have this championship that's going to be held on the West Coast where I don't have to be, you know, one of those guys that goes back East because that's always been – kind of one of the thoughts back in my mind, if I really wanted to take this to a fully professional level, how would I do that on the West Coast? And before this, there there wasn't really a way and there wasn't really any, you know, thought of there being anything like this on the West Coast. So now to have this opportunity and to be able to stay here and potentially have all this grow into somewhere where I can stay here and possibly even sustain, you know, basically a career out of fishing, I think that's what really excites me. And I think that's that's the cool thing for all the young anglers, because I know a lot of kids um, that, you know, went through my high school club or are still in high school and college, and they all want to fish and, and do it at the highest level. And there hasn't been anything on the West Coast until now. So I think that that's really promising for the younger generation that's going to come up and have this offered to them once they get to that level. And um, of course, to be able to fish it or, you know, hopefully be able to fish it if I qualify. You know, that's just super exciting for me. I've, I've always wanted to fish something that's that's a big championship. I got to fish one of the Bass Nation championships, and that was a super cool experience. But, again, I had to travel back, you know, to the East Coast for that. So to be able to do that out here and compete against the best guys on the West Coast, truly the best since it's going to be across all the different platforms, I think it's just going to be something that will that'll really showcase the West Coast and, and what it has to offer. All right, very cool. John, I want to send it back to you, and and really I want to get everybody's take on this. We have a lot of, of fans, BTL fans, that, that exist on, on the West Coast, on the West Side. Uh, we have a, a large number of fans, though, that are based all across the U.S. Can you kind of describe or how would you classify the competitive nature of of the classification of anglers that exist on the West Coast for people across the nation that maybe not truly understand how good and how competitive the West Coast anglers are. John, what are your thoughts? You know, uh, the anglers out West, uh, when you take the top anglers in any division, East, South, North, they're the elites are the elites. They're good, you know, um, but it, it, Ty was kind of a good example this year in his first uh, rookie year. He took a lot of the techniques that we use out West. We're really stuck in the finesse fishing world. Greg Gutierrez, master of it. And, and you know, talking to Ty, a lot of those people, when he, when he told them that he drop shotted for a whole FLW or a MLF tour tournament, <laughs> they didn't want to believe him. They're like, seriously, you, you made a top 10 drop shotting? Because they're always like, oh, you know, you only catch small fish drop shotting. And here's a guy at the elite level that makes it to the final day um, drop shotting. Uh, but, I mean, you look at guys like Justin Lucas, Brandon Polinick, all from the West Coast, you know. Um, it's I, – I don't know. When you're, when you're at the elite level, you're just at the elite level. It doesn't really matter where you live. I just feel like we've, in the West Coast, never really had the opportunity to showcase it, whether it was uh, – on televised uh like tv or uh, now that we have youtube you know a lot of people are making their own little videos but like like this championship is really going to bring the focus not a, really of just other anglers but of potential sponsorships moving out west and realizing that their market doesn't have to stop on the east coast or southeast like rick had mentioned you kind of draw that line and the west coast only makes seven percent 
And uh, as anglers, we want to help grow the whole market. But a lot of that comes with companies that are willing to take the risk on us. And this championship is going to be that showcase of, look, it's just not like throwing money in the air. These are quality anglers that can actually bring value to these uh, companies when they invest in us. All right, Greg, you've seen it all, man. You, you've been doing this game a long time. Uh, how, what is your response to that question? Well, well you know, when, when we all sat down and we talked about the the, uh, the new Bassmaster Elite Series, I was fishing the Bassmaster Tour. What was it? The Sitco 150s at the time. And when they made the state, you know, the announcement of what was going to happen, um, 50% of that field just was in shock. They absolutely hated the idea and said it would never grow. And look what happened to it. It's the Bassmaster Elite Series. But you take, you take, now we talk about what we have as far as a caliber in the West, right? And what it's, what it's going to take to fish against. And, and truthfully, we have, you know, we have Jimmy Reese. We have, we have Skeet that pops in. We have Ish Monroe. We have Jaron Lindner. We have Cody Meyer. We have... We have some hammers out here that fish and fish regularly that, and, and they know what's going on, you know, and we have, we got, we have guys that, that can flip with the best of them. We've got guys that can throw top water with the best of them, drop shot with the best of them. I mean, we've got the gambit covered. And so now we're talking about, we're talking about pulling all these different um, groups and entities together to put this together. First of all, I think, I think, um, one of the foundations with with this apex tour is a really cool deal i think building building the the plan i think what rick and and um and uh wild west bass jeremy has going on and building fishing in the west is is spot on we need we need to go out and start looking at those younger anglers to become all the new guys you know what i mean not that long ago, Ty Al was that kid watching watching me on TV, and and I remember sitting down making my first Bassmaster uh, Elite Series cut on Grand Lake of the Cherokees and just giggling like a little schoolgirl, you know. And Rick Clun and and Danny were sitting there laughing at me, laughing at me because I was laughing, giggling about it. I mean, the, the sport is so infectious, um, but it's hard for us to get out there and get those. Uh, those younger kids into this program so we can start building them to do what we're going to do because we do need all of those younger anglers to, to fill our shoes um you know like tony was saying i'm i'm getting i'm running out of sunset somewhere my arm's going to fall off my gray hair is going to you know, it's it's already telling I'm getting a little shit. But, um, you know, just wrap some duct tape uh, with your spinning rod with your buggy whip. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah, just, just put that buggy whip. Out how to do re it. Reel it on your side. Yeah, no, there I'm you excited go. about. I'm ex I really am excited about this. I think. I think. Uh, you know, again, back to the caliber of anglers we have. Um, we've had. We've had many, many, or several. Uh, Bass Master Classic qualifiers come from the West. You know, back in back when we sent a lot of them there with um, the federations, and uh, you know, I I just I just think that good things are coming, and um, and I, and we need support. We need support from the anglers to keep to keep pushing um, forward so that we can build this sport out here that puts um puts more boats in the driveways of all these folks and more fishing rods in their hands more more uh shameless plug frenzy baits nails on their on their rods and um you know we're we're, we're spreading the love everywhere you love that don't you? you love that <laughs> i'm sorry kenny it just slipped out slipped out but you know you know what i'm saying we need that opportunity out here um to so we can be what the the east has built themselves into and and I'm excited to see it happen. All right, Tony, let's go to you. What are your thoughts on the competition that takes place out West? Yeah, you know, I don't think it's any different than any other part of the country, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I think, uh, you know, the, the caliber of anglers we have out, uh, here out West um, is, is top notch. Um, there are several guys that, that could go back East and, and make a run out of it. Um, 
but you know, as we all know, it's it's difficult. It's difficult to to take that time away from family, and and if you have a full time job, to take that time off that job, and I, everybody across the country is is uh, is against the same challenges. Um, so I, I just, in my mind, I don't see it as being any different. I think we have we have fantastic anglers in the West that can be just as successful as anywhere else in the nation, and this is going to be a great opportunity for them to make a run at this in the future um if we can make the market grow and, and and get you know get more participation and and uh um when i say and when i say the market i'm not just talking about competitive angling i'm talking about you know the, the all, all the uh, you know tackle manufacturers boat manufacturers um fishing line manufacturers just on and on um the whole business of fishing if we can grow it um, it's going to be a big opportunity for these anglers that do want to compete out here and make a living and, and help, you know, further grow these opportunities that, that await us. All right, Ken, I want to go to you next because you made some comments, uh, from the previous question that I kind of want to follow up on and tie it into a little bit about what you said. Is this championship or is this, uh, event really going to help you generate revenue that you need all right to survive as a professional angler if you don't have something else going on on the side or whatever but is it going to position your brand as a professional angler much 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 better by not having to absorb the expense to try and travel to the central u.s or the eastern u.s because of the amount of exposure that you can obtain through this championship series? What are your thoughts? Yeah, Mark, um, 100%. The, the answer, the simple answer to that is yes. Um, you know, obviously, if, if uh, you know, I hate driving personally. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay. I, I, don't, I, make no, I make no bones about it. I hate driving, I hate towing my boat. You know, uh, everybody asks me, am I going to go back east? My answer is, with the H, no. Um, you know, because I don't, I don't think that, you know, that, I'm going to drive three days out there, you know, fish for 10 days and drive three days back. That's, that's, that's two weeks for me. Um, you know, and then half of the time I'm spending behind a, a you know, behind the windshield. So, um, yeah. And I was listening to Tony talk and John and, and, you know, I think the biggest thing, you know, obviously we have the anglers, you know, you know, them all, we can go down mm -hmm. the list and, and name them all uh, that have accomplished the highest thing that the sport has to offer that have come from, from our region, you know, and I think that for the first time, you know, the, the word that comes to, to me when I was listening to Tony and Greg talk was, you know, we, we haven't had a platform and a format to do the kind of outreach uh, that, that we, we have done, you know, like, like for instance, you know, the, the, the apex uh, pro tour, you know, we went to Comanche and there were, you know, there weren't hundreds of kids out there, but there were kids out there. There was, there was, um, you know, men and women and, and, uh, they were, you know, they were walking up to Luke Johns, like, you know, he was the next Aaron Martin, <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and I say that in, in all sincerity, because that, that kid that has that positive interaction, yeah. uh, with another, with, with another kid, that's what I call Luke Johns. Right. And I don't mean that disrespect, disrespect, <laughs> you know, but, but when you have Baby a face. Yeah, when yeah. you have a kid yeah. that has an interaction, a positive interaction with an angler like Luke Johns, you know, or Tony Franceschi or, or, or whoever, um, th th that kid at that moment, he doesn't know the difference between Luke Johns and Amart. He doesn't know the difference between Luke Johns and Ski. Um, you know, so, so to do that kind of outreach, um, and then, you know, with, with Rick bringing in, uh, and really, galvanizing uh what wild west pro-ams are uh the one bass uh pro-ams you know and and with uh helping keep mlf out here uh you know bringing those that group together and having a hundred thousand square foot show uh it being televised doing live coverage um that's never been done out here mark ever yeah. we, we yeah. we've never had that you know um so, and I go back to what John said, you know, it, it, fishing is fishing. You know, you, you put the, the, you, you bring 10 of the greatest anglers here to fish against 10 anglers on any given day. 
Yeah. And it'll probably go 50, 50 down, down, down the list, you know? Yeah. So, so for me, that, that's, that's what's exciting is that we're actually doing the community outreach. We're bringing awareness. Um, you know, you started the show with that, like, Hey, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it got announced, but how many people really are aware of it? Yeah. You know? Um, so when the platform gets built, I, I really believe the anglers, meaning us, Greg, and others who are, aren't currently fishing Apex or into the Western, uh, the Western Bass Shootout, uh, it's going to attract them to come to MLF. It's going to attract them to come to One Bass or to come to the pro -Ams or to qualify, uh, you know, for the Apex series. You know, that's, that's the whole thing. I know this is not about um, the Apex series, but, you know, we finally, finally have a tour that you can't just pay to get into. Right. You have to to, you know, I, I don't and I don't want to put it what Panger's doing. Right. I mean, the journey Panger's going through to, to qualify for the elite, uh, you know, is, is legendary. But yeah. but but you have to qualify. You know, it's it's not something that you just like I said, that you can just pay for and get into. So so when you make it, um, we're trying to really develop true professionals that when you have to qualify for something, it's difficult to make. And when you finally make it, you have to find a way to sustain yourself um, in that platform. All right, Luke, uh, final question on this round. Uh, I want to know how important is this entire tournament series that you're involved with and the uh, Western Bass Shootout going to be for the future of becoming a, a true national professional angler? Yeah, I, I think this is really pretty much the gateway to it for the West Coast. I think before this, like I was saying earlier, we haven't had a tour out West that really or draws like national attention. Um, you know, of course, we had MLF and we have the, the U.S. Open every year, which are huge you know, events, but they really don't garner the same effect that a classic has or, you know, the Bass Pro Tour or anything along those lines. And I'm not saying that, you know, this Western Bass Shootout is going to come out the first year and put up classic numbers for viewership or anything along those lines. But I think what it's going to do is it's going to give us a platform to build it into something similar to that and to offer it on the West Coast and, and to have the ability basically just to grow it into the, the biggest tournament the West Coast has ever seen. And that's what I'm really excited for. Because I think just as a young angler, I've always had that question, like I was saying, you know, you, I couldn't do what I really wanted to do, which was fish professionally on the West Coast. And now right. there's starting to be those those gateways to open up with through the Apex Tour. That's the first step. And then with the Western Bass Shootout, there's number two. If you, you know, can put those two things together, you're going to draw a huge number of just uh, or, or a huge number of viewership throughout the year. And then on top of that, the, the endemic and non-endemic sponsors that are, are going to come along with those two things are going to be great for the West Coast. And I think it's just going to, you know, shed light on to what the West Coast has to offer. And on top of that, I think it'll draw a lot of new anglers in. You know, I've already had my buddies texting me and, and kids from the high school and college programs kind of wondering, you know, what's go going on with Apex? How do they get into it? And then, of course, now with the Western Bass Shootout, I'm sure I'm going to start getting questions about that and people who are wanting to qualify. So I think what it what it does is it just gives the the entire future generation of the West Coast something to look forward to because it's kind of been a little bit bleak uh, for the last few years. Um, you know, if you wanted to do it at a higher level than, you know, the Wild West Pro-Ams or, or the MLF Tour. All right, Rick, this is a fantastic group of anglers right here. Uh, I've got to ask you, do you have any questions for any of these guys, man? I tell you what, I just appreciate them all being a part of this initial Apex group. They took a big risk jumping out there. Uh, we threw the carrot out, and everybody jumped in, and they're, they're in, and they're all in strong. And uh, most of the men on this screen have all definitely kept the, the glue together on this Apex situation, and we got a lot of growth to do. And Ken pointed that out. But, you know, uh, of course, Mark, you know, I go back a long way on the West Coast. And I can remember North Hollywood Marine. And, you know, I met Dave Glebe and D. Thomas in 1975 when D. Thomas came out here on the West, up from the West Coast and came to Little Lake Bull Shoals when I was a kid. And, you know, how far that is from me. Uh, 
I can drive there in less time and you guys been on screen. So uh, <laughs> that's where we test them out at. You know, we're literally eight miles from a lake or less. So uh, they brought uh, flipping out here and Glebe stood here in the lobby and showed me this jig and showed me how to do it in 1975. And I've got a friend I fish team tournaments with. And, you know, you go back and Cecil Douglas, we fished team tournaments years ago together, a couple. And uh, Cecil was in the Navy in 1960s. And uh, his uh, aunt lived in a small town there, in a town there. And he went over to see his aunt. And his aunt's neighbor had this boat with these big 12 foot rods in it, aluminum boat. And he fished and he went over and met the guy. And the guy would talk about flipping and pitching these toolies. And the guy's name was this guy named D. Thomas in the 60s. Wow. And so you go back to that. There's been a lot of stuff come out of the West Coast. And, you know, Bobby Garland, Ivano, um, you know, John Bedwell, just all kinds of them have come out of the West Coast and, you know, several more. But you look at what's happening today after the days of the old North Hollywood and Marine and uh, Fun and Son and others that were out there in Phoenix and Tempe. But uh, there's just been a real change in years ago we had a salesman out there and he talked about how great the west is how great the west is the west always had about 10 percent really good anglers that can compete with anybody but today the west has got the same thing everyone else has got they can compete with anybody and so it's going to be really good bringing these guys forward in their own template and format will it be to where Luke Johns can give up his day job when he gets out of college. You know, Luke, I'm not sure that's there. But <laughs> <laughs> He's got to get a job first. Oh, <laughs> I got oh. a job. Come on. He's got a job. That's right. Yeah, he's yeah. got a job. He's in with us now. But uh, Yeah, I, but I'd say, Rick, you know, I, I think, did, did anybody think Bassmaster would become what it is today? You know, I think that you roll the ball out and, and you know, it, it – Really, each angler is really up to building their own brand, you know, so I, I think it can happen. I, I, I honestly do. Yeah. Every great thing starts some, somewhere. Right. Well, you know, we could we could fail miserably here, Mark. Um, <laughs> but if we if we fail miserably and we gain one, we didn't fail. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't think so, that's going to happen. But we're going to make I, this I really happen. Don't. I mean, it's. These guys are at the same risk. We're all at some degree. They've all risked what they're doing, and they've gone this way. Um, and I, I respect what these men have done in jumping out with us on this venture. And sure, we're going to grow it, and we're going to try to grow it. Will we get it to where it is? You know, do you realize, Mark, I don't know if you know that, what's the limit for a bass in Oregon? I have no idea. Why don't you clue him in there, John, you know. You know what the limit for a bass in Oregon is? They don't have there a is limit no size. limit. Mm -mm. No limit. No limit. They don't, they don't limit. have it. Wow. It's just where they do. It's just really not even on the same platform. It's it's not like they're going to catch them all. Like one time Louisiana used to be the 15 fish limit place. You know, um, it's not like that. It's just there's no threat. Right. And wow. And there's no threat to catching them all. And one of the greatest fisheries is there's some really great fisheries in Oregon, man. Really great fisheries. You know, I got a buddy and he's an oil and gas attorney. Basically, he's one of the best in the country with EPA. And he's done a lot of work for us. And he went and wrote a lot of the code out there on natural gas legislation in Idaho. And so he goes out to Idaho and he takes his boat out there. Of course, he runs one of ours. And he comes back, he spends three years in Idaho, and he says, man, the fish are just stupid out here. <laughs> That's what makes us so good. Yeah. yeah. Uh. <laughs> we won't be stupid forever if we accomplish our goal, Ken. <laughs> but it was just, you know, he couldn't believe that he's catching these four- and five-pound smallmouth in Idaho and Washington that just, you know, you take that back to Alabama, those guys wouldn't know what to do. You know, it's just that good. It's like, there's just so many places out there that are untapped. And a couple of places we got on a pipe for these guys next year with Apex, and honestly, are going to be record setting. Very nice. All right, I want to go around the board, just some final thoughts from you. And then Rick and I will wrap it up and we'll say goodbye to our fantastic guests. So let's start with John Stewart. John, final thoughts on this deal. 
Uh, pure excitement. Um, we've all kind of described how we feel about this, but I mean, to, to, to end your show, uh, first of all, thanks for having us um, to be able to use your show to kind of expand on this platform. And, and thank you, Rick, for believing in us West Coast anglers to bring something um, to the West Coast and help grow just the market and, and grow the future of West Coast angling. Um, I've got a 10 year old boy fished his first junior bass tournament yesterday. And and it's going to be really nice to uh, when I'm old and in uh, and grandpa diapers, you know, and they think I'm senile watching bass fishing shows go, hey, you know, I had a hand in that. Um, just like Ken said, you know, Bassmaster, it, it all it was a dream and everything starts with a dream. And Rick had this dream and Jeremy and Rick got the ball rolling and, and here we go. So uh, the future for the West Coast is going to be really exciting. And I'm just glad to be part of the beginning of it. Very cool. Greg, final thoughts. Hey, again, I, I, I echo that, uh, that um, thank you to uh, Rick and Jeremy for having the hoods, but put, put it out there to make this, to make this something we can actually push for. And, and Mark, thanks again for, uh, for giving us the platform and a good seeing you. But um, I would say for all those folks that are out there fishing all their circuits and they're looking for a platform to be able to get out and do something, um, get out there, support your platform and put everything you can in there, but, but go out there and get some kids involved in this thing, bring something up. I, I've, I've said this also to Jeremy. I would love to see us, uh, start into a woman's league. I, I believe there's enough gals out there that can really catch them. And I would love to see that happen. So, um, we're, we're opening up Pandora's box. Um, things are coming out and, uh, and I can't wait to see it. So uh, thanks again for everything and the opportunities for sure. Ken, final thoughts. <laughs> Mark, I got two final thoughts. Uh, first one is uh, what I said earlier, you know, uh, be patient with this. Uh, that goes for uh, the Pro-Ams, you know, with One Bass, uh, MLF, uh, you know, and then with the Apex uh, Tour, you know, uh, it, it's, you know, we're, we're growing it slow. Uh, there, there is a plan, you know, like, uh, Rick and Jeremy have talked about, it's a, it's like a, you know, four or five year plan. Uh, so the people be patient, uh, you know, with this, you know, and the second thing is, you know, I, I challenge all the companies that Rick started with that he talked about, you know, um, that, you know, and I think people know this, you know, California is the ninth largest economy if it was its own country. So the money is here and those companies need to sell product to our region. And it's not about, you know, I, I, I really try not to use the, the term uh, West Coast. I, I see it personally as a dirty word. Um, but, you know, we're, we're talking, when we say West, we're talking about Texas West. There's 11 states not including Alaska, you know, West of Texas that has been untapped by these companies and by having a platform that Rick and Jeremy are trying to build. And we're going to go into these regions and areas that that um, have never seen bass fishing, you know? So, so that's what I would do. And, and, and that's my challenge to, to companies. You wanna sell a boat, you wanna sell a fishing rod, you wanna sell a frenzy nail, um, you know, you wanna sell whatever you need to sell. Uh, this platform is gonna market to those people finally. So that's my final thought. Great stuff. All right, Tony, final thoughts. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, again, what, with the, the things that have happened in the last couple of years with Wild West Bass and have finally having, um, you know, a, a, a tour that you have to qualify for, it's, we've never really had that out here in the West. Um, and then on top of that, this next step with the, uh, with the Western Classic Shootout. And then, um, you know, this is, this is becoming something that, um, this is going to become something big, something where I don't think we've ever had something where every organization could get together and participate in it before. This is kind of a, this is a first really. And then what, but on top of that, what I would challenge anglers to do, there's a lot of anglers out here in the West that love fishing. They love competing. And uh, you know, you hear the term, everybody says, well, I left it all out there today. Well, to me, the only way to leave it all out there is, is to help grow this thing is to leave something out there, make, make it better than what it was when you started participating in it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it all out there. And so I, I, I would just ask that every angler out there that wants to participate and wants to see something like this grow in the West, leave it out there, bring something to it. 
Um, you know, we all know somebody, somebody that works for a company that can help grow this sport in ways that we never thought of. It's all about relationships. And, and I think that's what we need to look at as anglers and, and really lead with this sport. Um, and that's what I'm going to try to do while we're trying to grow this out West. Very nice. All right, Luke, final thoughts. Well, first of all, I wanted to thank you for having us on. Um, I really appreciate that. And of course, thank you to Rick and to Jeremy and all the people at Wild West for getting this thing just put together and organized for us. But, you know, I won't reiterate everybody else's points, but they all made great points. But on top of, uh, you know, kind of what Tony was saying was, you know, getting more people involved. And I think, you know, one of the best ways to do that is, you know, to ask, you know, everybody out there is to take a kid fishing, whether it's a high school kid or a college kid. You know, it's it's hard to afford a boat as a young angler and, you know, hard to afford tournaments. But, you know, if you could just take a kid out fishing and, you know, get them introduced to the sport, show them a good time, show them what it's all about. I think that would go a really long way in building a foundation for what's to come for the future generation of our of our sport. And then on top of that, you know, I'm like I said before, just super excited to be fishing in this thing. I, I can't wait to kind of be uh, representing, you know, or keep representing the younger crowd. And, you know, I'm just super excited to get this thing going. All right. Very nice, guys. I wish you nothing but the best. I can't thank you enough for taking time out to share your feelings about this new venture on the western side of the U.S. I won't say west coast anymore, Ken Ma. <laughs> thank you mark you, you all right, I, one at a time yeah i'm wor i'm working on that so uh <laughs> everybody man have a great week and uh continued success and whatever your adventures are and uh once again man thanks for taking time out we look forward to seeing you on down the road great thank show. you mark all right thanks. you guys thank take you. care thank you mark thanks mark all right rick hey mark wow what what a group right there that was a uh, good crew. We've got more fantastic. Bring in, but yeah, yeah, Fa fantastic group. All right, what are your final thoughts? You know, you, I think Tony hit on it, and and it's pretty hard, and and Ken hit on it too. But that's community and outreach and area, and that's what we're going to have to do. And you know, going beyond that, I, I, you know, and of course, I know you watch video on the that we have on YouTube of the announcement, and on the announcement, I challenged all the organizations out there, and you know, Randy Pringle Bass Bass Trail, and there's uh, a lot more out there. Um, you know, we need everybody to get engaged in that lower level to grow this thing, and we want to create true pro tours to do that. We need young guys that are coming in at a young age and start like we all did, Mark, when we were kids and start fishing yeah. when we were young, and, and we need to bring those out, and we need them to get involved in ABA, Federation, club events. Uh, you know, we've tasked it to a lot of people, uh, Vince, Vince at Future Pro. We want Vince's crew to come out. You know, we really want to, the whole thing to grow. And that's, this is not a, this is not Bass Cat. And this is not Wild West only. This is us that are taking the lead on this. And we think there's room to do that. Um, it's going to be a while before we get our feet wet. I think uh, that uh, Ken said it well, be patient with us before we get in there full bore. Um, but, you know, one of the things I think we did hit on, that's we want to be stewards of the sport. And we want to leave it better than we got it. And I know you do. And, and you know I do. Yeah. And those aren't just words we make. We both know we want to do it. We want to be an impact. But these men have all want to be an impact. And the 32 Apex anglers we got all want to be an impact. And so it's really been great to see these men want to be engaged in communities. And we're just looking at formats on Apex on – how we engage them more in that community, to be honest. We want to bring them in more, not just at the ramp, but in the school, in the business, in the chamber, in the McDonald's, the grocery store, the hardware store, and get them engaged in the community while we're there with Apex. And then that's going to help us to grow this. And then through this uh, Western Bass Shootout, we're going to get a platform that everybody can kind of come see these guys all play. And hopefully that outdoor show will bring people to it and we can wind up with a uh, boat show, outdoor show that everybody displays their wares and we make it a better place, man. Man, that sounds great. Now, if if the fans out there want to follow the progression of what you have going on, what's the best way for fans to connect and see this evolve over the next few months and over the next year? Well, we're going to have to certainly put that through on our websites. We don't have a website created for the Western Bass Shootout yet. We're way early. 
Um, okay. but we will get a Western Bass shootout page and we may host that on, on uh, WWBT. We may hope it host it separate. We don't want it to seem like it's all WWBT or, and certainly don't want to seem like it's Bass Gap. We want to bring it off on its own if we can. And I hate that we lost Jeremy on that feed because, you know, he's yeah. more to it, but Jeremy's driving and I know his cell service was sketchy, but, uh, we definitely want to bring more to it and hopefully we can. And, and we want it to be where we get more people engaged. And so let's not take this as it's bass cat and it's all going to be bass cat. It's not, uh, we will get our share if we're in the front end here and doing what we're doing and trying to grow this thing on the West side. And then, um, the rest of it, everybody needs to get their share of this and, and try to grow it. And we all got to, we all got to sacrifice to grow it to ever prosper from it. And so that's where we're at. We know we've got to do that. All right. Let me ask you this, Rick. Do you think that there are anglers on the West coast that truly what I classify as having the game? In other words, having the, the skill base, the knowledge base, but not necessarily maybe the financial base to be able to compete at the, at the highest level. And they've just kind of, you know, drifted away from it maybe because they just didn't have the resources uh, to be able to pursue either bass or major league fishing or whatever's out there. Do you well, think that you'll see an increase in those people now driven by what you're offering and what this is going to offer the anglers on the West coast? Well, Dave Glebe still works at the Bass Pro Shop. Mike O'Shea hung his rods up and raised his daughters. and not sure like he might get his rods out of the closet. <laughs> uh, you know, and Greg Hines, I, I don't think Greg's fishing anymore. So maybe we need him and Mike Reynolds and many more to kind of step up and try to get back in the game. And, you know, yeah. you remember Rich Tauber, there were a lot of good West coast anglers. So we're definitely going to need some of those old guys to come back out with their rods and, uh, we need them to get involved so we can grow these young guys. And, and then as we grow the young guys, we'll, you know, the young guys, the old guys can't compete with the young guys today, Mark, let's just be honest, you know? Yeah. We're not far from the same age and it's not going to happen, you know, but or certainly we need them to be mentors to that group and bring it forward. And some of those guys that played, they competed at a high level. Some of them, when I fished the top 100s, I competed against, you know, and, you know, Jay Ellis is a great angler from out West, but uh, how do we bring him out? How do we bring all of them out of it? You know? Uh, so I think that's what we've got to do. And we got to, then we got to grow with this young base. So it's, it's kind of an interesting thought on what we're trying to do when you look at answering your question yeah we want to get the old guys out mark and yeah. we want and we'll, and we'll get young guys out too and it's all going to come together but if we don't do it it's not going to happen the west has never done it and so you know pardon me ken ma for saying west coast but you know it's never <laughs> done it um but i mean you know it's it's always had this little around it that it just wasn't where the rest of the country is it's there today and the guys yeah. there are just as good as the guys in other parts of the country are they any different than a guy from the james river and the chickahominy over there when you go to the james and the chick they can't go to bull shoals and compete they can't go to sam rayburn and compete and the guys from sam rayburn and bull shoals can't go to the chick and compete you just don't finish at um, the delta and pick up a rod and go fish the great lakes and so yeah. all the, it takes about three years for a touring angler to really find his roots, unless he's just extremely good or had a lot of help. And I mean, there are some definite flashes in the pan that go and come. And then there's guys like one of the ones I, I liken it to is Randy Howe stayed till he figured out how. And Randy, you know, he's as good as an angler, an angler as there is now. Yeah. So I think there's anglers like that. And I think the West has got those anglers. And I, and I think that, um, they exist everywhere is what I'm trying to say. And yeah. They exist. The, the, the probably there's two things about this initiative we've got going that I want to bring up. And one of them is the West, but there's another one that takes part of it. And that's the far Northeast. And we want to see the far Northeast grow too. And as you can tell, we, we've kind of taxed with bass to help with that effort a little bit. And I'm not sure exactly what happens there. But, I mean, we can't do both of them. So, it's a different situation out east. It's a different situation. You know, Mike mentioned it on a call the other day, on the Zoom call. And that area of the country is really about the same size though, as the west is. And um, as far as the percent of sales for any of the tackle companies, any of the bait companies, um, any of the boat companies. 
But when you look at the east, it's the uh, same as the west. It's got a tremendous population base, and there's tons of tons of capital in the northeast. And so, how do we get those guys out and and get them fishing? You know, it's it's a different game, and it's going to be a little different for the shorter season because the, the you know the east has got a shorter season. The guys in California, Arizona have got and, you know Las Vegas. You know, and you know Las Vegas. We think Las Vegas is one of the biggest growth potentials. You know, Las Vegas has got a little lake just south of it called Mojave. It's mm-hmm. one of the best smallmouth fisheries in the country. Yeah. And Mojave's a wonderful fishery, and it's sitting just north of Laughlin. So Laughlin, we're going to push Laughlin to kind of help do that. But if I were living in Las Vegas, I'm not going to Mead. I'm bypassing Mead and going to Laughlin, down towards Laughlin, and I'm going right. to go fish Mojave, you know, and oh, go yeah. catch me some big smallmouth. And, of course, when you get a little further south of that, you got to have a suit. And you get further past Abbotsford, you got Martinez. I don't yeah. know about down at Yuma and Martinez, but it's one of the big bass factories of the capitals of the, of the country. You know, there's a lot of big fish down there. Yeah. And those guys probably don't want me saying that because it certainly won't handle a lot of pressure. <laughs> but it hasn't had a lot of pressure. So it's a great little fishery. You know, you can go down there. Nick, I'm sorry for giving away your hidey hole, but. <laughs> One of my <laughs> one of my friends, he lives down there. He's got a house down there at Martinez, and he loves it. But I mean, it's a great it's a great fishery. So getting these guys out and getting everybody out and getting them engaged, it's going to take all of us. It's going to take you. you yeah, know, it's going to take. And I appreciate the time you've given us today very much. Yeah, it's cool stuff. It's been great to uh, talk to those guys and and get insight from you. Now, on the earlier show today, this morning, we had. Terry Battisti on and Ken Duke, and we got into a little bit of a discussion. It's funny that you bring up Oregon, and we started talking about Crater Lake. Can you help us out here? There's no bass in Crater Lake, correct? I have no idea, but I've got a data study when we started this. I'm going to have to pull it up here somewhere, and I'll tell you someday, because uh, there are lakes out there like Bear, I think it is, over in um, in, um, Nevada or in Utah that doesn't have bass. Or at least they say it doesn't, but they do have bass in Tahoe, for example. They just don't want you to know it. <laughs> now I've seen those. I've seen yeah. those up in the marinas and stuff around where the oh, grass yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. And so you look at um, Crater. I don't know. We've got it in the data study. I haven't studied that. When we started this project, I hired a young man, uh, Jackson Braun, who's our sales director here now, and uh, he basically schedules all the product. And, uh, Jackson's job with, for six months was to do a data study on the West Coast. We didn't just jump in this without a lot of knowledge. So we've got every lake, every convention center, every AMP, every chamber of commerce, every UTV store, outdoor store, tackle store on the West Coast. We've got the lakes all graded in four sections. We know if they've got fish or if they got a ramp or if they're close to a convention center or a rodeo arena we can use. And so we've done a pretty thorough study on this to try to figure out what is all the feasibility before we ever start it? Nice, nice. I, I, I want to end with this, and, and I, I just want to mention this because I thought it was the coolest thing. When I left school today after basketball practice, I go the same way home, same way to school every single day, but I noticed something was different today. Directly across from where the Chevy dealership is, somebody has opened up a tackle shop. All right? This is in Blanchard, Oklahoma, and there's not a lake <laughs> Within 50 miles of this city, maybe even more. There are farm ponds, farm ponds around there, though. But my thinking was somebody knows that people are interested in fishing, or they just got a bunch of money to burn and decided to open up a tackle shop. <laughs> I doubt that. It is a great time to be in the tackle business, of course. Yeah. You know that. It's been a, there's been a lot of blessings come to the tackle industry, the outdoor industry as a whole through COVID. People are not taking cruises or going to the beach. They're buying boats. Yeah. I mean, the wakeboard segment has grown phenomenally. Um, yeah. It's amazing what the two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar wakeboard boats have sold this year. That are just it's just off the charts. They've never had yeah. a year like it. And you know, no doubt every boat company's that way. Every bait company's that way. So I'm sure that in Blanchard, Oklahoma. Don't you have a little river runs through there too? No, no. There, there's some really, really good farm ponds uh, and and little small watersheds that are on the golf course down there. Oh yeah. Now, and people, they, they those get hammered by by a lot of my students. Believe me, they they sneak on and there's like 
fives and sixes and even seven pounders in these golf course ponds. So I'm not giving away any juice there by any means. Everybody because knows it, yeah. Everybody knows it, and the challenge is getting on there because you get ran off every time you make a cast. Yeah. <laughs> now, we went over a couple of weeks ago. We waded Crooked Creek, just smallmouth fishing, and we had been down there a couple of weeks back, and we kind of went through there and found some log jams and drove the roads and looked around, and we found yeah. a big pool of smallmouth and uh, about an eight-pound black in Crooked Creek. And, I mean, you just don't see an eight-pound black in Crooked Creek. Wow. I mean, wow, I knew where it was. Now, those fish got big for a reason because they were smarter than me. So yeah. some of those fish in that farm pond, they're probably pretty smart by now. They're pretty smart. I, I guarantee <laughs> that. All right, Rick, uh, thank you so much for uh, helping put this together and, and having you on, and hopefully we'll open the eyes up to the fans on what we could expect in 2023 and really uh, kind of set things up for what people can expect on the West Side, not the West Coast, the West Side. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be very, very exciting to follow and see the evolution of what takes place with what you and a lot of other people have going on with this project. Well, we're, we're in the early steps. I'm sorry we lost Jeremy again on that feed because I know it's yeah. hard to stay up with him driving. But, uh, you know, I appreciate what Jeremy's done with it and Randy and everybody on the West Coast. He's got some really good staff, employees, D, Karen, and uh, hopefully everybody um, stick. Everybody that we've used and worked with over there has been great. And we just need to really keep growing that thing. And hopefully we do. And hopefully we can see ABA grow and everybody get engaged and we can bring this thing forward and. You know, we, we when we said we need them all, we need them all. All right. Well, thanks again, Rick. We're going to have to get you on before the end of the year. We'll talk a little bit about 2022 and uh, what can, what we can expect from a Bass Cat standpoint, what we can expect, and anything else that you want to talk about well, when it comes to that. 2020. We'll, we'll get back engaged. All right. Sounds great. So, folks, that's going to wrap things up tonight. Don't forget, tomorrow, very special show, Boy Duckett. On 8.30 a.m. right here at the normal time on BTL. Going to give us a State of the Union address, more or less, on Major League Fishing. So it's been a while since Boyd's been on BTL. That will happen tomorrow. And then uh, no show on Wednesday. And then day four with Frank on Thursday. Continue show number 40 with Frank. So everybody out there have a very, very safe evening. And we will see you in the morning. 8.30 a.m. Rick, have a good evening, man. Good night, everybody. All Thank right, you. that's it. We're out of here. <laughs>